Hello there Leap Youth, hope you're all doing well and looking after yourselves and looking forward to Christmas and all that stuff. Uh, this is just a quick video, uh, I'm going to talk about some ornaments and stylistic things uh, concerning the ash tree in the wild garden which is the lovely tune that we'll be playing by Max Gittings. Uh, so I thought I would start it off by just playing through the tune, uh, littering some ornaments around, see what you think and I'll talk about them afterwards. So here we go. So yeah, um, so we discussed a couple of things in the big session we had on uh, Wednesday. Um, I believe we talked about cuts and all sorts of other lovely things like that. So the cut, um, I'll just re-go over it just to jog your memory because obviously you might not remember all the things we talked about. Um, so this cut thing, it's a type of almost re-articulation um, and it tends to be very percussive. Uh, the way I play them, I'm from... Uh, I play Scottish traditional music, it's music in my country, and um, uh, it comes from piping music, so it's very percussive. So, so you kind of have to get that, because um, often when we're playing trills with classical music, it's like you can hear all the notes, but this one it's very, very percussive, you don't really want to hear much of a note. You can use any finger. That's a good thing to practice. And the place that I like to use these notes, um, these sorry, these cuts, I think they work very well when we're sort of uh, rearticulating sort of um, longer notes or double notes. So in this uh, tune, we have a lot of um, uh, dotted crotchets and quaver rhythms, and I've always found to give it a nice sort of swing, stick a little cut in there in the dotted crotchet. So I will play. Um, from the start of the tune, and all the times that I have a dotted crotchet, I'll cut it. So I don't. I hope you could hear that. Um, and the other thing about this, it's not just this hand. This hand plays a part in it as well, as it does always. So. Um, I'm going to do it without the cut now, and I want you to see if you can hear what I'm doing. Could you see that? So what I was doing slightly, speed up slightly into the cut, and it gives it a really lovely lilt. Like, a, not, not a huge one, just a lovely sort of slight swell. Another thing that your classical teachers will tell you not to do. <laughs> Okay, so that's the cut. Um, another place I like to put them is in these sort of double A sections in like bar two of each um, of each measure. And then on the way down as well. I think it gives it a really nice sort of feel to it. Um, So yeah, that's the cut. A really good way to practice it is literally just feeling the rhythm. And one the, another important thing is always do it with a really nice feel of time and pulse. Because that's one of the most important things about folk music is that feel of pulse, which gives it a sort of lovely rootsy feel. Um, so yeah, just...
yeah, there's just a couple of exercises uh, that you could try even. So I was just incorporating part of the chin into that. So uh, another little ornament that really works well, and you heard Max do it an awful lot, like so lovely. I always love the way that the whistles and the flutes do these uh, do slides. Um, so there's a couple of bits, I think you probably heard me do a couple of them when I was demonstrating cuts. But uh, yeah, slides, I always feel it's just like a late way of getting to a note. Um, and it really adds a lovely sort of um, emphasis onto the note. And I, it's really nice to use them at high points. So, uh, for example, we're going to talk about using them in bars. Um, so, like bars five, six of the B part of this tune that we've got. So I'll play from letter F. This is in the first fiddle part. Um, but everyone should have this tune at some point. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so I'll play from letter F. Um, You see how I accented these high notes, these high points of the phrase of the arc, because they, I, yeah, I think it gives it a really nice feel. So that's using your fourth finger. Um, so yeah, you're just getting to the note uh, slightly slower than you normally would using the finger that is going to be on that note. So yeah, another one for You want to slightly squeeze the bow ever so slightly just to give it that extra sort of oh, that, that little tug which this chin does so lovely, like so well I should say. Um, you can incorporate a cut in it as well. So yeah, that's a slide. Um, you can kind of put them in it anywhere with uh, sort of like you want to put them in sort of high points of phrases. You don't want to stick them in everywhere. So, uh, right, that would sound horrible. So yeah, you really want to choose your points for um, putting them in. So that's why I think putting them in at this high point of the tune really gives it that lovely uh, emphasis of this part. You know. Okay, now the last little ornament that I like to use, um, I think it works really well. It's a very Scottish ornament, I must admit. Um, so when you have open strings, there's a lovely way to get to the open strings, which I think has a really, really nice sort of feel and uh, colour to it. So what I usually do is what I want to do is whenever you're coming to an open string, so I think the last time we hit the, the open A, which the tune ends on, um, is a really good time to use it especially since the note before it is a G natural. So what I like to do is, when you've got an open string, you want to have your, your third finger the semitone below uh, the open string. So for example, if it's a D string, C sharp, if it's an A string, G sharp, E string, uh, D sharp. So what you want to do is, it adds just a little sort of um, uh, accent to the string. It's not particularly, you don't want to um, fully play the note below. You want to slightly snap it onto the upper string. So this is important with the bow as well, because you want to give the low note a slight squeeze. You hear it? It doesn't quite work as well with the tone below. So you want it to be a semitone below, because it's just a leading note up into that open string. But it's not like... You want a proper snap on it. It's almost, again, it's like quite a percussive sound. You 
can use it in any string really. So I like to use that on that last A that we finish on. Um, hear it? It's not, it's not as much the note itself that's important, it's just that getting to the next note, the open string, that's important. Again, remember to use your, the, the right hand is equally as important in creating groove and feel. So yeah, those are some ornaments that we talked about. Um, one thing I would recommend is maybe... Uh, Playing this with a metronome is important as well, I think, because one of the most exciting things about trad, folk music, anything, whatever you call it, um, is that sense of real roots. Like, you can feel it in your belly. It's like a, like, it's from the ground, you know? Um, so by playing it, like, really in time, but with a lovely feel, is what makes it so exciting to me. So if you listen to me playing it, Try and see where the emphasis of the of the beats are. So try and singing it even is a really really good way of sort of trying to get the feel. So um so I'll I'll just sing it right now. So with as much feel as I can. You see, all this, all this feel, all these ornaments and all this stuff, can you can do it with your voice. And translating that onto your instrument is, is the key. So yeah, have a lovely Christmas. Uh, that was just a little video about ornaments and stuff. Hope it's not, I've not checked how long. I was, so I might have been ranting for a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so enjoy your Christmas. Have, good luck with everything. And I'll see you very soon. Take care.